I love this room because it's all about great food and conversation. I think what a table should look like for guests is come on in. I'm Sarah Gore and welcome to Open House NYC everyone. We've got some great homes to show you this week and I am bringing it all to you from this duplex loft inside the storied McIntyre building in the Flatiron District. Swifties will recognize it as the location where Taylor Swift shot some of those famous Polaroids for her iconic 1989 album and you can see why. This is classic New York loft living made new, featuring unique design throughout. Just check out this bright open great room with south and western exposures, huge picture windows, original woodwork, and soaring 12-foot ceilings. The airy primary suite occupies the upper floor with a huge walk-in closet, office space, and plenty of light. It's one of three bedrooms in this edgy urban oasis. Let's get started at the Upper East Side penthouse of award-winning actress, author, and activist Marlo Thomas. When Marlo entertains, she does it in style with an effortless flow between cocktail hour, dinner, and even brunch. And she just happens to do it with her very own custom-designed tableware, all of which brings a festive elegance to any setting. See what I mean? Hi, I'm Marlo. This is Charlie, and welcome to our home right on Central Park. I'm looking forward to showing you how I entertain today. Come on in. As soon as my guests arrive, this is the first place they come, and I always put out a huge spread, and I love to just focus here. Everybody looks out at the park, and it's beautiful all year. When I first built this apartment, I said to the architect, what I want is a Malibu house on top of the city, and that's what I think I've done. What's exciting for me is that everything on this table I created for William Sonoma for my collection. Isn't it lovely? It's very sexy, very nighttime. And this is a wine cooler, but I use it as a flower pot. This is my favorite thing. You know how you always have to bring the crackers and then the cheese and then the fruit? So I designed this especially. I love all these pieces and people sit here and they munch and they drink and socialize. You know, I was looking for a really wonderful cabbage flower to put on my sofa, and I got a whole bunch of them together, and they just look so beautiful. It's like a garden. After my guests have had plenty of hors d'oeuvres and cocktails, then I kind of usher them in to the dining room. So I'm sure you've noticed that there are palm trees everywhere in my house. I'm from LA, I have to have them. You can't grow the bougainvillea, but you can have the palm trees. Now we are in the dining room. I love this room because it's all about great food and conversation. What makes a good party is a collection of people that'll be interested in talking to each other. I like people to know that I was thinking about them and I put them next to somebody they'd like to talk to. That's why I have place cards. That way by the end of the dinner, everybody feels like they had a good time. I think what a table should look like for guests is come on in. Everything here is gonna be pretty, it's gonna taste good. The eyes eat before the stomach. So if something looks delicious and luxurious and inviting, you'll be more apt to enjoy the meal. And these tables are wonderful. These are two different tables, so that if you only have six people for dinner, you're not sitting at a huge dining room table. I bought these chairs and I painted them blue and then these are all hand painted, the backs and the seats. And so each one is different and gives it a painting feeling. We have light coming from the north and light coming from the south. You're looking at other buildings. And so I put greenery up so I don't see the people over there and greenery on that end so I don't see people over there. So in a way I've encompassed my home in greens really. So this is a nice little spread that I do for brunch. As you probably know, I'm half Lebanese and half Italian. Both sides of my family love to eat. So whenever I put together a brunch, I like to be sure there's something for everybody. And what's exciting to me is that everything you see on this table is from my collection. 
You know, I never thought about designing my own collection. Laura Alber, who's the CEO of uh, Williams Sonoma, she saw all my things and she said, you have to do a collection for us. So that's the first time I ever thought of doing it and I'm loving it. I get such a kick out of it and seeing my name on the back of a plate. This table and these chairs came from my house in LA. They never get old, they always look wonderful. But I love the natural wood. So I usually do like to set this up here in the library with all the books and then all the photographs of my family of me with some important people that I'm impressed to have met. There's even a picture of Phil dancing with Princess Diana. I think another great secret about having a good party is having a piano. There's no room for a big baby grand piano, but this little piano, this little Yamaha, it's great. This is a lovely little spot. I have a lot of furniture and works of art and lamps and so forth. I don't think anything has to match. And that's actually what inspired me to make my own collection in different colors, different pieces. You know, you put it all together and if you like it, it works. Thank you for coming. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I entertain. And come again. Next time I'll give you some real food. Want to entertain like Marla? Well, then check out her new line at Williams Sonoma. Coming up just after the break, we are crossing the park to the Upper West Side for a look at this penthouse beauty with its very own rooftop oasis. Welcome back, everyone. Now we're taking a look at this elegant, classically designed penthouse on the Upper West Side. The grand proportions of this home can be felt the moment you walk in and wait until you get a look at that roof garden. Ugh, just heaven. Hi, I'm Gabriella Mitchin with the agency. Welcome to the penthouse at 235 West 71st. This classic Upper West Side apartment has 5,000 square feet, five bedrooms, four baths, and it's designed for entertaining and you feel that the moment you walk into this grand foyer. With gallery walls that can accommodate an art collection, this elegant foyer leads you right into the great room. This great room is my favorite space in the penthouse because it's 70 feet wide with south-facing picturesque windows. The proportions in the great room are so grand that it accommodates three separate areas. Here we have a sitting area, a formal living room, as well as a dining room. The living room is flooded with natural light throughout the day and is large enough to host all of your friends. This corner dining room has double exposures, 10 foot ceilings, as well as partial river views. And nothing goes better with dinner than a sunset over the Hudson. What makes this penthouse ideal for entertaining is the easy flow from space to space. Just imagine sitting here in the library on a cold winter's night. The fireplace is roaring, you have your favorite book in hand and a glass of bourbon. You want one? Actually, I prefer vodka. <laughs> Just look at this serene pin drop quiet primary suite with both northern and eastern exposures. I just love this little seating area where I could kick off my Manolos after a long day in the city. The room has ample closet space which includes a windowed walk-in closet. And the windowed five fixture marble clad bathroom is the perfect finishing touch to this primary suite. By now you've seen how magnificent this home is, but the most unique feature, this grand stairwell, which leads to something even more spectacular. Your own private rooftop oasis. With over 1,200 square feet and southern exposure, you get natural sunlight all day long. And with a place like this, no one needs a summer home. This rooftop terrace has both a dining area and a lounging area, making it the perfect place to host a daytime champagne party for all of your friends. And this is also the perfect place to end our tour. Thank you for visiting the penthouse at 235 West 71st Street with me. Cheers. We're going to take a quick break, but coming up next, we are visiting a cinematic estate in West Hollywood. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back everyone. Now we're in the hills of West Hollywood to visit this retro futuristic estate dubbed the Californication House. It has everything you can imagine and likely a few things you can't. It's an indoor-outdoor fever dream of a home and takes its inspirations from mid-century architecture, a certain secret agent, and just the right amount of rock and roll. See for yourself. Welcome to the Californication House. I'm Jason Summers, and I designed and developed this home along with my brilliant partners of Disco Volante. Because we're in the heart of Hollywood, the house is incredibly inspired by the 1970s James Bond Thunderball movie. And coming through here, you see the James Bond Jamaican inspiration. I can't wait to show you what's inside. Let's come on in. We like to call this design style future retro, including an 85 foot long pocket window system, which is the longest in LA. You have indoor outdoor living almost the entire year. Coming into the dining room, you'll see we even found a 1970s Murano glass chandelier. One of our favorite colors and elements is green, so we have this jade green onyx that really is the center stone of the house. And having these vintage artifacts, collectibles, natural elements, really I think brings a soul and energy to the house that will hopefully feel timeless in this home. The kitchen is the heart of the home. And in this house, it's even set on a pedestal to look out into the view over the city. Of course, the LED lights really accentuate the beauty of the green onyx set off by this bleached white walnut. With our continuous floor plan, we have this circular couch with this crushed gold velvet along with the Murano glass. And then you have the warmth of the fireplace and of course your open windows that take you to the outside of the home. Joining us in the Cocktail Trophy Lounge is my design partner, Ranger. Ranger is certainly one of the inspirations of this house. His aesthetic really speaks to the strength of some of the architecture we chose to go with here. So this room has eclectic items. This comes back to the James Bond of traveling around the world and to really create the crescendo of all of it is our secret nightclub entry. Welcome in to the magnificent Club Disco Volante. In this perfect entertaining space, we have our backlit Tiger Eye Onyx DJ booth. It then follows in through to this beautiful custom angular bar. And then we come into our beautiful theater. It's just emerald green, crushed velvet everywhere, and is a comfortable place to lay down with a group and watch your favorite vintage film. Our incredibly inviting long infinity edge pool it makes you want to just dive right in. The sunken fire pit that's surrounded by water. This becomes the ultimate conversation area and sit with the eye line of the city view and the fire to keep you warm. That wraps up the tour. Thank you all so much for stopping by. There were so many intricate details to get through. Looking forward to seeing you at the next property. Coming up just after the break, we are taking a look at this colorful home overlooking Madison Square Park. Welcome back everyone. Now we are overlooking Madison Square Park at this nomad apartment that is as curated as it is comfortable. Designer Amir Kandwala channeled his client's desires, his international aesthetic, and a keen editor's eye to create a vibrant home that's refined, surprising, and accessible. Take a look. I love design because design has the power to change lives and how people live. I'm an interior designer. My name is Amir Kandwala. Welcome to our Nomad Project. The goal for this project is for one to travel from New York to Paris, Morocco to California and back again. It all starts here in the entrance hall, starting with this incredible rug that's made of a gold metallic leather. The wall color evokes the color of the desert. 
It's a Tadillac finish, which is a Moroccan finish. The chandelier is French 1940s, an ebonized mirror, and the cabinet is French 17th century. Even though these pieces are from different times and places, they come together because we know how to put them together. We wanted the living room to be comfortable and cozy. One of the first things we chose was this 17th century Turkish carpet as it grounds the room. We use this incredible day bed by the window. You can look out and you see Madison Square Park. The sofa is in the style of Givenchy. The coffee table belonged to my client and was handed to her by her father. The accent wall is using the same Tadillac Moroccan plaster finish. We wanted something very earthy in this room to ground the space. What connects the dining area to the living room is again the rug as it lays the foundation of this room. Another interesting piece is the metal and mirror cabinet. What we love about the cabinet is how it reflects light in the space. The round table and the sculpture on top of it, it's a great way to separate the two spaces and also to walk around the table as one appreciates the sculpture from all angles. We love the shape of the table, which was customized to our space. The chandelier is French. It's a contemporary design that came from our client's inventory. We wanted to channel old New York in our kitchen, and we did that by using black lacquer cabinets, which looks really chic and also reflects the light from the park. The pendants are by Christophe Combe, and the backsplash is Zilich tiles made in Fez, Morocco. The kitchen is not only sophisticated, but also functional and user-friendly, and it's part of the journey. The main bedroom is an abashedly feminine and bold, evoking 1940s Hollywood glamour. One of the standout features of the room is this custom headboard that's covered in a velvet. The lamps are made using porcelain flowers and the nightstands are custom made. The reason we picked this light fixture is because it's very light and looks like the moon. The combination of all these pieces is glamorous, feminine and bold. Experiencing this apartment is like traveling the world without ever having to leave. I hope you've enjoyed the tour and I'll see you on the next one. Coming up, we are with designer Vanessa De Leon in Jersey City. We'll be right back. Welcome back everyone. Now we're with designer Vanessa De Leon, who shows us how she created a sleek and stylish entertainer's dream home in her client's Jersey City duplex. Hi, I'm interior designer Vanessa De Leon and welcome to a brownstone I design in Jersey City. My client wanted to convert this early 1900 brownstone and modernize it for a work-live situation. And I'm excited to show you, come follow me. We're now in the family room. I split up the space with a bar, fireplace, and a beautiful sitting area. This was a big blank wall, and I really wanted to create drama here. That's why I designed this space with this bump out for the fireplace. I also wanted something interesting flanking the fireplace, so I decided to bring these two beautiful sconces just to create a moment. Here in the bar, I wanted to use colors that are a bit more unconventional, so I decided to use this beautiful blue laminate, the countertops a marble with some blue veining, floating shelves in a natural wood finish, and some gold accent in the hardware for the cabinet as well. One of my absolute favorite spaces in this brownstone is the backyard. It's expansive and beautiful. We have a barbecue that has full refrigeration, a lounging area with a fire pit, blue stone when you first walk out, and a gorgeous horizontal wood plank throughout the entire backyard as fencing. It's so beautiful out here, it even looks good in the winter. Here we are on the second level where it consists of a primary room with an ensuite, a guest room with an ensuite, and then dining and kitchen area. 
Since the dining and kitchen area is one big space, I really wanted to keep it very minimal. On the countertop, I used a waterfall edge here with a large vein marble. I really wanted to make sure we use high-end appliances to really elevate the space. To finish it all off, I added this beautiful smoked walnut cabinetry to give it a real high contrast with all the light finishes throughout. And the attention to detail doesn't stop here. Let me show you the primary ensuite. In the primary bedroom, I wanted to create a retreat from the rest of the home. Around this room, you'll find light grays, whites, creams, and ivories. And to add a little bling and high drama, I use these beautiful pendants that flank the headboard. I love dressing up my bed, and I feel like more is more when it comes to pillows. I use a high headboard here for the drama, and I layered silks, velvets, quilts, and overlays. I wanted to create a bit of whimsy and playfulness, and that's why I chose a Sputnik lamp over the bed. And best of all, I use a cove lighting detail. You can shut off all the lights and create a beautiful halo on your ceiling. In a city like this, you have to stand out amongst the rest. And by using elevated finishes, bold accents, and unique installations is how I achieved that. Thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up and let us know which of these gorgeous homes featured in this episode was your favorite. So many to choose from. Which will you pick? <laughs>